Welcome to Automated Flight, week seven, where we will look at a, um, a method for control engineering called the root locus method. And we will be using a very simple example to just illustrate what it is. Well, if we look at certain systems, the linear time invariant systems, which are differential equations that are linear with constant coefficients, we know that we get a transfer function, which is a fraction of two polynomials. And if we have a polynomial, we can write it out in terms of its roots. So if we take our transfer function, we can write it as some um, constant times s minus z1 to s minus zm. So those are the roots of the numerator. And s minus p1 times s minus p2 to pm. Those are the roots of the denominator. And we have the zeros, zm, are the... Um, uh, they are called the zeros of G, it's where the function is equal to zero, and the poles of GM, so P1, and this is supposed to be an N, because they don't have to be the same uh, in number, those are called the poles of our transfer function. It is where our transfer function goes to infinity, or is not defined. Now, we can de determine uh, the complete behavior of our system in terms of these zeros and poles, where zeros will be the response to a certain input and poles will be uh, stability properties. As we know, if we have a fraction of polynomials, we can write this out in terms of a partial fraction expansion in uh, each of these fractions. Now, should P, uh, a pair of poles be complex, conjugate, uh, com complex conjugates of each other, let's say that P, um, p1 is a plus j times b, then p2 will be a minus jb, and they come in pairs. And what will happen if we have a pair of complex, uh, con uh, complex uh, roots is that we will have uh, dampened or exponential oscillations, and we get a quadratic term. All these fractions we've covered in previous weeks, and they all relate to something like 1 over s um, plus a, which in, in the Laplace domain translates to a time function, which is a to the, a to the minus a t. And we, of, of course, also had our um, quadratic uh, uh, fractions, where we get something of the form e to the uh, power of minus a t times the cosine of bt and of course its partner e to the power of minus at sine t. So these are the functions that resulted from uh, partial fraction expansion of, uh, um, of transfer functions of this form. Now let's look at the poles because the poles des uh, determine our stability. Now if we have a pole on the real, the negative real axis we know we have exponential decay. So we have a function that decays exponentially. Now the further that a uh, pole lies on the uh, real axis, the faster that exponential decay will be. And uh, conversely, if it's on the positive real axis, uh, axis then we will have uh, exponential um, growth and the further it is on the positive real action, the faster that exponential growth will be. Now, if we have poles on the imaginary axis, and of course they always come in pairs, then we'll get pure oscillations. That is in the case where this A is simply equal to zero, then we get pure oscillations. And the further this, um, the further we go up on the imaginary axis, the faster those oscillations will be. I'll write that to here where we have very fast oscillations. And if we are not on a, an axis, but we are somewhere in the left half plane, then we'll, we will get uh, dampened oscillations. And if we are somewhere here with, of course, another set of pairs, we will get exponentially growing oscillations and anything on the right hand side 
uh, is unstable and anything on the left hand side will be stable. Um, so this is our behavior. Now, we also saw that we could characterize our second order systems in terms of the damping ratio. And if we looked in the complex plane, again with a real and imaginary axis, we know that lines here are lines of equal damping ratio zeta. We also see from here that if we take um, poles further in the left half plane, we will have a faster decay. And we also see that the frequencies and this is called zero, uh, the real axis and imaginary axis, the further we get vertically from the real axis, the higher the natural frequency will be. And these are all properties we, we want to control uh, when we design a system. Well, this can be used in three scenarios. As one, we uh, don't have a system yet and we want to design it. Let, let's say we want to uh, tune a, um, um, a helicopter seat and we want to add a, uh, a tune mass spring damper where we have to still decide on the, um, the mass we add, the spring we add and the damper we add. We can design the system so that it meets our design requirements. A second scenario is that we already have a system, but there might be some variation in uh, one of the parameters due to um, uh, time or temperature or any other factor. And we can see uh, what our system does as a parameter changes. And the final one is that we have a system that we cannot change, but we want to add a controller and we want to see how the stability and these properties change as we vary that parameter. Now, one of the ways to do that is to see what happens if we change a parameter and what, uh, what it does to the position of our roots, uh, of our poles and our zeros. And um, we saw that if we take a system, g of s is 1 over s squared plus 3s plus 2. And if we added proportional control to this, so this will be our proportional controller where we multiply it with gain kp and we have our reference and our error and we feed it into this system. We would get a closed loop transfer function equal to kp over s squared plus 3s plus 2 plus kp. Now and we want to see what happens to the roots of this uh, denominator, so the poles of our closed loop transfer function as we increase um, our gain. Now, uh, one thing we can do, uh, and I'll need a little bit of space, so I'll, I'll erase this, is have a look at what happens to the locations of the poles. Now, we don't have any zeros here because we have a, a very simple system, uh, a very simple mass spring damper system. And we can see what happens. We know that the roots of the denominator, so our poles of the transfer function, are at minus 1 and minus 2. The same as it, we had in the example in one of the previous videos. Uh, but what I now want to show you is that if we look at certain parameters, uh, so kp, we want to look at the damping ratio, the natural frequency, which will be in radians per second, the rise time of our system. Remember, that is the time it takes to reach 100% uh, from zero or uh, any other value. But let's take uh, uh, zero to 100. The rise time, we have the settling time. And um, now I really need to get rid of this because we can always uh, also look at the percentage of overshoot. 
And these are properties of our system that we really want to be able to control. Now let's look at this system. If we take kp equal to zero or very, very small, then the roots lie on the negative real axis, which means our damping ratio will be one and we have no oscillations. We also have a rise time of about 2.6 seconds, a settling time of 4.6 seconds, and we have no overshoot because we have an overdamped system. Now let's take kp a little bit larger and I've taken these so that here we have an overdamped system, here we will have a critically damped system. So we still uh, see that we have um, one pole because if we take, let me just write out the closed loop transfer function. If we take kp equal to a quarter, this denominator here will have only one zero and that will be at minus 1.5. So we see that if we take a look at our first root, it moves that way and the other root moves that way. Oh, incidentally, poles are always denoted by crosses in our uh, root locus diagram and zeros by circles, but because we don't have any circles, um, they're not in there. Okay, so we still have a damping ratio of one. We don't have oscillations. We see a slightly faster rise time. And these are all rounded values, 3.9. So a shorter settling time and an overshoot of 0%. So we see if we increase the gain, the system responds a bit faster, but this might still be way too slow. Well, let's take a, another value of one half we get uh, 0 0.9, so we see that the damping um, drops a bit, which means we've gone up our poles. Um, what happens is that they meet each other and then head off in uh, 90 degree uh, angles towards, um, well, into the uh, complex plane. Uh, so we have now a natural frequency of 1.6 radians per second. We see that our um, rise time decreases even more, our settling time as well, and we still have no overshoot, but these values may still be a bit too small. So let's ramp up that gain right to four. Uh, we get a damping ratio of 0 0.6. We uh, get a natural frequency of 2.4 radians per second. Our rise time is now really short and our settling time is also short, but we get an 8% overshoot. So now these have gone more up into the complex plane following the lines. And as we increase the gain, we see that these two poles will stay. Uh, uh, um, we'll have a real part of minus one and a half, but the imaginary part will grow and grow and grow. So if we want to have a certain damping ratio, we know that that gain can't become too high. If we want uh, a certain decay, well, we can't have a faster decay because all of them lie on, uh, well, once they've hit this position, they don't go further into the left half plane, but we do see that the natural frequency changes. And um, maybe we don't want a system that oscillates too fast. If it's a physical system, it might uh, uh, shake it um, until it uh, breaks down. Um, so we might not want to increase our gain so that this number stays in check, but also our damping stays in check. But we do see that we have to compromise we see that we have, if we lower the gain, we get a higher rise time. If we increase the gain, we have to get a lower, uh, a faster rise time, but we get undesirable uh, properties. So with the root locus plot, it allows the uh, control engineer to see what happens to our system and also design controllers to mitigate these things. And of course, a controller doesn't have to be as simple as simply a gain. We can design any controller. Now, a designer, tunes the parameters, uh, tunes the gains of his, uh, his or her controller to suit design criteria. But of course, doing that by hand uh, wouldn't make sense. And uh, we typically use software like MATLAB or uh, Scilab to 
take our controller or take our system and design our controller and make root locus plots for the parameter we want to vary or to design a system with a certain parameter so that it behaves in the way we want to. And, uh, but we can do simple examples by hand just to illustrate what happens. But um, in the workplace, we typically use software. Um, and I will try to show you an example for that uh, another time.